YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Oh, this is gonna be something a little different for me. Well, technically, we did recover a chair before, but, um, and I did our trash to treasure from literal trash. But what I wanted to show you real quick is just a little bit of what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take this ottoman. Let me turn you around. So I have this ottoman. It's, the fabric is a little dated. <laughs> that me and my dad built in the late 90s because I don't think I was married yet yeah I wasn't married yet um at least I don't think I was I don't know um but I had a cat and I let her go ahead and have this go to town on this this is a really nice fabric or it was at the time but I got it really really inexpensively but I will show you the cushion on the top is really still very good um but I will show you really quick what's going on inside so this ottoman was built by my dad, recovered by me, or covered by me, um, and it still smells like pine. <laughs> it survived the flood, and it currently stores just tons of throw blankets. I am addicted to throw blankets. I just feel like throw blankets really make everything feel warm and make everybody feel toasty and cozy. <laughs> But I have just a few for Christmas and Halloween. <laughs> and this color. <laughs> and another one this color. These two blankets were actually from the hurricane. Um, they were donated by Target. Um, and then they were giving them away because we were freezing. <laughs> Um, and then I will show you the inside real quick. So the inside, my dad's idea was to decoupage it with like paper. This, so this was tissue paper. There is uh, the ivory with gold on this and then gold on the bottom. So you know what I'm gonna think that this is from after the wedding? Cause those were my wedding colors and these were probably tissue paper left over. And, you know, it's one of the very few things that he didn't sign. Usually he signed everything. I just want to check the bottom. Nope. So we put on there these casters. They're gold and ivory, and they've really held up, to be honest with you. Um, now, as far as slip covering is concerned, I'm going to go over a couple of tips of why we'll choose to cover this instead of reupholster it. So there's a couple of things. First of all, the staples are all really still secure. This fabric doesn't have any major tears in it, even though it's all frayed from the cat. There's no big holes where stuffing is coming out. The staples are all really still very well intact. So we're just gonna cover over it. If any of those situations were different, if the fabric, original fabric was coming off, if there was any big tears in the original fabric. And the other thing to consider is if the original fabric um, like this cushion, for example, if this original cushion was like completely flattened, um, you can see it's flattened a tiny bit, but it's still a really good, I put a really good cushion on this. Um, you can see it's flattened a tiny bit, but it's still in really good shape and it's really got a lot of cushion. We don't sit on it all that much and honestly, we don't put our feet up on it all that much anymore. We used to quite a bit actually. When my dad was going through his health issues, he used to put his feet up here every night. He was sleeping in the chair for a while. So um, so I'm gonna go ahead and recover it. With what you ask? Well, this is a Dollar Tree recovering DIY, isn't it? The thing that I love about trying to recover it with this particular fleece is not only is it soft, and people don't really sit on this ottoman very much, like I mentioned. Um, so I'm not really worried about the pilling so much, but consider that. But the reason I really wanted to show you, start this video the way that I am, is because I want to show you a couple of things. So this fabric is pretty neutral. Let me just turn you around so you can see what I'm doing. So this fabric is pretty neutral and it's pretty tonal. So like tone on tone and this Fleece. It has a white base. So as you can see that you can't see any of the pattern coming through the white. But 
if your fabric that you're covering over is not, sorry, I dropped the piece, <laughs> is not tonal and does have a pattern that's pretty bold or colors that are pretty bold, you can just still get from the Dollar Tree, if you want to leave it a Dollar Tree DIY, you can just get a white chamois or a white pillowcase or a white towel, whatever you want to use. And then you can put it underneath and you can kind of see the difference. Okay, what I'll do is I'm gonna lower this to here and then I'll put this fleece over it so you can see the difference. So can you see the, it's hard to see with the shadow, but can you see the difference here of how bright this white is compared to this white? This is what it looks like with the white underneath it and this is what it looks like without the white. Now, I'm not concerned about bright white. My mother-in-law smokes, so this will all probably all turn yellow anyway. Plus, it is a more vintage feel like that I'm used to having. So I'm not gonna put the white under it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and slip cover this straight on. The other thing I wanted to share with you really quick is instead of this Dollar Tree chamois, much more economic is to actually get some batting. So you can get batting really inexpensively. I think you can get a king size batting from Walmart for about $4. And king size is huge. It's 72 inch square, I'm pretty sure. I think that's right. Um, and then you'll get plenty of that. So what I actually have under here is a cushion. It was a seat cushion form that they had from Walmart that I covered with batting, two layers, and then the fabric. Um, my dad actually built the ottoman to accommodate the cushion. So we basically found a cushion and he built an ottoman to fit it. But if you needed to recover an ottoman and recushion an ottoman, um, you can always piece the foam together and just cover it with one continuous piece of batting. Someday, I promised my sister that I will recover furniture because I used to do it constantly when I was younger. But it's a little just it's a little harder to find the furniture actually in the garbage anymore. So most people are just hanging on to their stuff. So um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get started. Oh, no, we're not. <laughs> what I want to show you is my staple gun. Now I did have this out for the last recovering job, but the last recovering job was not on wood. It was just on plastic. For a lot of years, I use a regular arrow stapler, which was, it basically looks like this, and the staples come out this end. And I was definitely having carpal tunnel issues at the time. <laughs> or it was causing me to have carpal tunnel issues at the time. But what I ended up getting, and you can see this is a well-loved and well-worn <laughs> um, staple gun, is this is a Power Shot by Black & Decker. And what this is, is actually, it's a front push. So the staples come out of here. And you can put your weight on it. You don't have to use your hand as much. And you don't have to use your back lever as much. So um, this is actually my favorite. I had, I have an electric one and the electric one isn't even as good as this one. Now, as far as the staples are concerned, I will be honest with you. I don't have the staples that I want. And I'll tell you why. Whenever I recover and reupholster a project, I like a chiseled edged staple and I can't find them here in Rolla. That's not a joke, and that is 100% serious. I think I'm gonna ask my sister to bring me some. <laughs> but the size will depend also on um, how much cushion, like how much fabric you're going through too. So these ones are half inch, and this is what I mean by chiseled. Do you see how when you hold the staple on its side, it's square? I would like a staple that has this little like point to it. Now I'm 99.9% .9 sure I don't have any in here either, but let me check. Yeah, those are all just square as well. So um, if you've never used a staple gun before, they're this power shot is super easy, but they all just like a staple lure that you have at your desk, they all have a way to open the trigger to load the staple. Be mindful of where the staple end is. This particular power shot came with a cord guard or a wire guard, but this basically it's this piece of metal. I don't know if I actually have it anymore. Um. 
Yes, sir. Well, if I do, it's not in here anyway. So, if I have it, it's not in here anyway. But it's basically this piece of metal that goes over, and thank you. And it lets you feed the wire here so that you can staple over the wire. But, so, what I have here that I was able to find here in Rolla was Stanley's 3 eighths of an inch um, heavy duty staples. But again, they are um, not the chisel feature. I wonder if I can find them online and insert a picture. Maybe I'll do that. But I feel like this part was the most time consuming part was the lead in and to tell you about all of the things. So, oh, one last thing and I will show you really quickly is on the original, see if you can see it. I gotta feel it because I can't remember where it is. Oh, it's here, okay. So I know you can't see it because I'm an awesome person. No, I'm just kidding. But hidden right there is the sewed seam for the fabric. So if you're gonna recover an ottoman and you have a sewing machine, what I did was I found an inconspicuous place to hide the seam, which I feel like this is a very inconspicuous place. If I didn't point it out to you, you wouldn't know it was there. And basically what I did was I made a sock because that's like how you do it. <laughs> I sewed like a tube or a sock over it and then I pulled it down, stapled the bottom. Well, still, technically I stapled the top first and then pulled it down and stapled the bottom underneath. I decided not to finish the bottom. Like you can finish it with trim or gimp or, or tack strips, whatever you wanted to do. But I decided just not to finish the bottom. It was just for us. The other thing is for this particular project, I'm back and forth about whether or not I want to spray paint the wheels. If I do, it'll probably be in the future anyway. If I do end up deciding to spray paint the wheels, I will probably tape off the roller part, which is this plastic thing, um, so that it doesn't mar up my floors and just spray paint the ball part. I could always just take some oil-based paint and go over it like with a paintbrush instead of spraying, but we'll see. I haven't decided. They would look much better in silver with the gray fabric. That's all. Okay, so let's get started. Let's not get started. So on this particular project, because we have, um, we're not going to sew one continuous tube, I'm going to show you how to hide the seams on the corners each time. So it's going to be... Uh, a homemade DIY project looking. It's not gonna be as professional looking, but where I'm gonna fold over and continue around, you can always put trim on there or whatever you want because these pieces of, uh, these blankets are only a certain, I think, I wanna say they're 16, oh, 30 by 30 inches. So um, just keep that in mind when you're covering your stuff. So let's get started. So I would suggest that if you do have a sewing machine, I mean, you could use glue, fabric glue, or otherwise. But if you do have a sewing machine, then use that method for a more professional look, even with these blankets. What you want to do, if that's the case, is you want to measure the height of the outside of the ottoman, how deep the wood is, and then how much on the inside of the ottoman the piece of fabric is going to go. So basically, tape your, take your tape measure from inside all the way around the outside and to underneath. Then I want you to cut your fabric that width. You don't need a seam allowance necessarily for the stapled portions. Then I want you to take the measurement around all four sides of the ottoman, add two inches for your seam allowance. That's what I prefer. It makes it easier. And then to match up your fabrics until you make one continuous tube that is the width that you need with the height that you need as well. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So I will tell you that we are going to do another smaller ottoman and I'm going to show you those details coming soon. But like many things on my channel, I do always want to show you beginner steps first and that's then you can go on to the more advanced stuff. So I'm just going to stop working silently for a second to talk you through. I'm only putting three staples right now. because I might have to readjust the tension. Here's the thing about a stretchy fabric like this fleece. As you sit on it, it may stretch and then it won't necessarily be fitted anymore. But that also is a dependent on your use. What are you gonna use it 
for? Um, how often are you going to put your feet up on it or is somebody going to sit on it? So that all of that makes a difference because as you can see, as you press down on it, it could create puckering. So the thing is too, though, because it's fleece, it will stretch and it will change the shape. And what I mean by that is these squares, do you see how I stretch on it and they become a different shape? will distort their shape if I pull it too tight. So when it comes to fleece, you kind of have to feel out the difference. Pay attention as you're pulling it to see where exactly, you know, how exactly you're pulling it and how exactly it's misshapen when you do. So what we want to do real quick, and I, I think you've seen it already, is we want to, I, what I like to do is bring it up to where I want to staple it and then fold it back inside. Make sure that this piece lays nice and flat. You can cut it off, just leave yourself at least a quarter, I mean, at least a half of an inch for staples, and then you can bring it up. I'm just gonna leave it um, on there because it's not gonna show on the front of the fabric, it's just gonna reinforce the ends. And then I'm gonna go ahead and staple. I usually staple the middle first, which is funny because I just didn't staple the middle first. Now I will show you here. This staple didn't go in all the way you see that? Can you see that from where you're at? That staple didn't go all in all the way, which is why I prefer the chiseled staples. Um, when I use non-chiseled staples, sometimes you have to go back over and, and hammer them back in because a chisel staple kind of, you know, I guess the difference between putting a nail in wood and trying to hammer a dowel into wood with the flat end, you can imagine that that would be much harder. So it's along that same thought process okay so when it's a great pattern like this I don't know if you just saw that maneuver that I made so I basically was like oh okay so that's halfway through this gray this gray line I'm gonna fold it halfway through that gray line so when I come back all I need to do is fold it halfway through that gray line and it will fit now another thing is when you're stapling try to just move over from where the last staple was unless you're gonna be able to go over that entire staple basically like hug it <laughs> and your normally staple guns are about the same size so you won't be able to do that okay okay now how do we do the corners this is a matter of personal preference so sometimes you see corners and sometimes you see corners and they're pleated so let me show you a pleated corner quickly kind of like this right you've seen those before but when you use a fabric like fleece and you start on the side, you can actually wrap it neater because it has some stretch to it. So whenever you use a fabric that has a stretch to it, you really can get away with not really having any pleats on the top at all. Now, this fabric that I did underneath, can you see? Okay, so I had one fold right there. I kind of did hospital corners. That's another option. So to show you on the new fabric how to do hospital corners, you kind of go, you fold it flat here, fold it flat here, and then you take this triangle and tuck it under onto itself. And then you've created like a nice, I mean, it's not nice because it's fleece and it's very fat. So I wouldn't recommend that with fleece, but as far as slip covers are concerned, if you have a thinner fabric, then you create like a nice edge on the side. So for this, we're just gonna do that first or second way. I think I'm gonna just pull it gently and then staple along this edge, okay? you staple something and the staple doesn't come out you know you're done <laughs> um i think that these were what was in there hold on nope do i have two pinches i didn't have answer this is just a new package okay so you can see on here that it says it's for the power show oh. <laughs> 
You can see here that it says it's actually for the power shot as well. This is the staple gun I used to have, the T50. I had it for a million years. Technically, it was my dad's, so. But I ended up using it way more than he ever did. That's what he told me anyway. He said, you use this thing way more than I ever did. So. I had to break that in half because that strip was just a tiny bit longer than it would accommodate in here. So it's no big deal. You just do half strips. Okay. Where were we? Here. Coming around the corner. Okay. So we have one. We have one unsightly little pucker. Right. Do you see that? So we can fix that if it's really that objectionable to you. Do you see what I'm talking about? Let me see if I turn the light a little bit into the light. Oh, did I make it go away already? Sorry, I made it went away. Um, there was just one like pucker, but I was gonna say we could just flatten it out and staple it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut off all of this extra. Now, if you are, if your ottoman has got a tight fitting lid, then you might have to actually trim this up even more. Mine does not. Mine is custom, so it fits wherever. Here, there's a little bit of an extra pucker there. So what we're just gonna do is pull the fabric with the staple gun. That's my trick. Can you see how it disappeared? That's my secret. That's my secret technique. Um, but if this was, I'm sorry, you can't even see it. If this little bit of fabric is a problem for your ottoman cover, then you wanna just go ahead and you can either add some glue in there and then before you trim it, which you, which I would recommend, wood glue, PVC glue, which is like white glue, Aline's tacky, whatever will work. And then when it, the glue is completely dried 24, 48 hours, then you can go ahead and take your X-Acto knife and trim this step back. This is not going to affect the lid of my ottoman. Of course, if it does affect the lid of yours and how well your ottoman stays closed, then you want to make sure that you have good clearance there, okay? But again, for beginning purposes, we're just going to go ahead and do it um, easy, easy as is possible, all right? Now, this particular fabric, in hindsight, I probably should have done the pleated corners, but again, I wanted to keep this the basic beginner's steps of recovering something. Um, the way I'm doing the cushion to the top of this ottoman is exactly how you could recover a chair seat. Um, you unscrew the chair seat first and then you can either go over your existing seat cover or you can remove your seat cover, replace your cushion, your batting, and then cover it with whatever fabric you have. Um, I've done that so many times. Oddly enough, <laughs> other than the office chair that I already recovered, I don't have any cushioned seats in this entire house, which is so unweird. It's so unusual. Um, I do have a set of four chairs that I had recovered that are currently at Lisa's house um, that I lent them um, for game night and stuff. So um, if I do get the opportunity, maybe while I'm at her house, maybe we'll find some fabric. I'll bring my staple gun and we'll do that in case you guys run into that situation. Um, like I mentioned before, we'll probably do it again in the future. Okay, so this side, there is a tire gray row and then a little bit of a white show hanging out, a white row <laughs> showing. And then on this side, there's an entire white row with about half of a gray row showing. You have to decide to have one good side when it comes to a fabric like this. So the other fabric, you could have two good sides because there was a stripe that could meet on either side. Like I could have decided to put the stripe this way or I could have decided to put the stripe this way. When it comes to an all over like this, and this again is like a home job, we're not trying to make it look super professional. Professional, um, we're just gonna make it look cute. Then we decide what stripe we wanna be at the top. So just to show you for an example, if I put this half gray stripe at the top, say, right? and then I use this side. It's not lined up perfectly, but you can see where I'm headed with it. So then I just wanna adjust it, move it over a little bit so it can match. You see how it kind of matches there? And then we accidentally pulled it out and pushed it back and gray stripes. 
and then you realize that you're doing it backwards because this blanket has the stripes going this way. <laughs> but that's okay, live and learn, right? But you remember how I talked about the fabric being like you could pull it. Um, keep that in mind as well because we obviously pulled the the top blanket a little bit because it's not lining up with the, with the, there you go. So now you could decide like, oh, okay, do I want this to be in the front and it'll almost match there and then work around or what have you. So that's what you gotta decide. Me, I'm just gonna do whatever works. I will be honest with you. I'm more concerned right now about it lining up around the edges. So let me show you what I mean. I actually think the gingham is cuter like that. So it'll match on the sides, not on the top. And bottom. Okay. So I'm going to ensure that my blanket. A little overlap under the last edge okay if you're going to use one continuous piece of fabric you won't have this problem and now because of this particular blanket I'm going to try to line up the squares the best I can like I mentioned it is a little misshapen and you can see it's also not cut straight can you see that it's not cut straight down here do you see how it's not cut straight so keep that in mind pay attention to that but this is going to be the end on the side here so we're gonna end that and overlap that last corner. What we're gonna do is go around at this point. Oh boy. Oh, okay. Can you see now? Okay. 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 So we're gonna go ahead and tuck this. Now I'm not gonna fold this over like I did on the bottom of the other side. Um, because of, of space and room. So, I guess technically I should, but I'm not going to. <laughs> One reason you would, and I'm sure that's gonna be in the comments, is you would if you were, if, if you were making this for somebody or doing it professionally, you would want all your edges to be professionally finished. I am not. And this is just a blanket chest. It's not to impress anybody. It might have been to impress my future husband when I first did it, but right now it's not to impress anybody. And I already got him, so. What? Exactly. So oh, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna line up the top. We're gonna see how well we line up the sides. So now I was kind of, I bought five blankets because I was thinking each section should be their own little bit of fabric. So like I should end this on the corner. You know, like each one should be its own bit of fabric. But I'm not 100% sure about that just yet. So, um, you know what, since I am thinking about that, let's start on this edge. Get a straight line. Let's get a coordinating blankie. Let's see if we can. Let's see how well the factory did with the tag. Let's see where's the tag. Here. So if this tag is there, then that tag should be here, and this should line up perfectly, right? Um, what do we have on the corner here? So can you guys see that, how, let me throw a staple in here for a second, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Let me line this back up, and so I have like a, 
perfect seam on the corner. And if I do this, so now you can see like that was my original vision for the blanket to to go around each side like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cut off the edges and go and cut off the edges and go and cut off the edges and go. I know it's really dark. I'm sorry the light disappeared on me. There you go. So that was my original design. Then to take the next blanket and just repeat. definitely doing a good job of keeping the, the patterns the same. can cut off all this extra if we want to use it for other projects and stuff or possibly potentially give this thing a skirt we can hide the wheels One thing we can do too, if you're feeling less confident about its security, I want to show you, is we can go like this. And then it will hold that part closed. Okay, just to give you an idea. Now that we have like the basics out of the way of like how to use a staple gun, why do we use a staple gun, how to hide staples, how to cut the fabric, and so on and so forth, uh, the next DIY we're going to do is going to be more in depth of the details of a professionally finished looking piece of furniture. Um, how to add trim and how to do different um box pleats on the corners and stuff like that. So all of that stuff is um, going to be coming up in the future. I have a cute little red ottoman here at the foot of my couch that I think I want to do a new cover on as well. Um, just because it's look like it's looking like worn. It's a, I'm sorry. It's looking like it's a little worn and the cushion has gotten really, really flat. So I'm probably going to do a more uh, full professional looking tutorial on that one. Okay, so since we left this space here, this like, because we stapled it here and not in the corner, now we can go ahead and do the same thing that we've been doing with that last edge. So we're going to cut it first, you know, before we were stapling it and then cutting it. Now this is the one end, this is the beginning and the end, it may not match up, and that's okay. And that's okay. That's okay with me anyway. I don't know if it's okay with you, but it's okay with me. Cause I'm expecting that. <laughs> okay. We're gonna tuck under. So we'll cut here just to give us a little bit more room to tuck under.
trying to do it. I'm trying to do it on camera. <laughs> also, these two chairs that I have in my living room are new. But if they ever get old, then we can go ahead and recover them as well. Um, but for right now, I really love the way they look. So I won't be touching them. Um, but I really do love how this looks in front of the one chair. Now, you could also go like this. Now, as far as the DIYers toolbox, it is definitely, I think, a must-have to get a staple gun. It's not only good for reupholstering fabric and making headboards and such like that, but it is actually really good for DIYs, putting signs together, putting wood together. It's just when I usually do a Dollar Tree DIY, I don't use a staple gun. So now you can take your box cutter, X-Acto knife, or whatever you want to do, as long as it's really sharp and you can clean this all up, or since this is fleece, you can just like stab it. Oh, I didn't do this side. <laughs> Looks like I started to and then I stopped. Did I do this? Like when did I actually run out of staples? I'm getting in the corner. We are good, okay. Getting in this corner good. Then you can like clean up your corners, cut out your middlemen. Now, is this objectionable to you? You cut it off. It's not to me. I'm going to leave it. Plus, for the purposes of this video, I don't want it to be six hours. Okay. So, <laughs> the bottom, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take one side at a time. We want to make sure that the under piece is laying flat and the over piece is laying gently over it before we staple it. And then we want to just go along. Not going to pull the fabric, right? We decided not to pull it to misshape in the, the um, blanket. And then what I love about the power shot is it's very easily turned upside down. Okay, let's turn it over and repeat. Okay, pull the blanket back. Make sure this is laying nice and flat. If it's not, put the buckle. Make sure this is laying nice and flat and go oh this side because i don't do that side. and now that i'm fixed this i can do that corner too okay oh must have hit a not too close to the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. There we go. Okay, now, if you want to, go ahead and cut this. This is the first piece that's officially, officially done. Jesus didn't take the wheel. Am I still too close to the wheel? <laughs> still too close to the wheel. There we go. That one's in. Okay. That one's in. Yeah. 
some you ain't what you're driving or the clothes that you wear material positions don't matter up there and someday in heaven when the angels all sing these rags that I'm wearing will be fit for a king Now, I feel like that Ottomans, or my dad used to call us a hassock. I don't even know what the difference is, to be honest with you, um, are, are sometimes really readily available at garage sales and at thrift stores. Um, if you're ever scared of getting um, some upholstered piece of furniture, you know, like a chair with a cushion on it or whatever, from the thrift store because of, I don't know, bed bugs or whatever you're afraid of um, just consider that you can always take it outside you can really rip it down to its studs if it had bed bugs they might be in the woods so just be mindful of that but <laughs> you can treat them with heat um, as well uh, but definitely you know uh, putting one of these together is really really simple I actually wish that I had well obviously I wish I had my dad still with me but if dad was alive and we had YouTube that'd be a whole different story <laughs> But anyway, I would love for him to have shown you how to put this box together. It actually is just four corner braces, two long sides, two short sides, um, and then a bottom. And I mean, you know, he was just really very talented at what he did. And we got the wheels off of an old, an old rolling desk. So it's, even those were thrifted, um, which I thought was pretty cool. He, we were we were pretty we were pretty cool like that a lot of the wood that he found um we had left over from uh, uh there was a cabinet shop in town and he would go by the cabinet shop and pick up whatever scraps of wood that's how he carved all his fish out of i know i've shared some of them with you all as well but he was an amazing little carver in his retired years um and he carved all of these fish that were all over my dining room um and all from like found wood and other people's trash. So trash to treasures in my blood. I think growing up um, in the economic stages that we were in, <laughs> it was a necessity when we were growing up, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, not necessarily just a hobby or we didn't do it out of just the love of repurposing. We did it out of necessity. But then it grew into the love of repurposing. <laughs> um, now, as far as this bottom is concerned, I am not going to cover it. Um, but I'll talk to you in a minute about all the different um, options there are for recovering it. But this fleece, I don't know if you guys, when you work with fleece, it sticks really well, well to the wood, like just by me doing that. Um, and I don't know if even if over time it would fall down. But um, we're going to talk in a little bit about some finishing touches and some different alternatives to the edges. But if you were going to make this quote unquote professionally and have sewed ends, um, I would love to know if you would try it. That's all. If you know, if you did try this project, I definitely want you guys to let me know. Okay. Now I told you when we were lining up the edges that I really care about the pattern matching up with the top, but I still want to find my best side and put my best side forward. Um, the one thing I did notice is that when I pulled my corners, I did end up, um, I told you in the beginning that I might have to adjust the side pieces. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just pulling them actually a little bit with my fingers, but mostly with the edge of the staple gun. Um, using the lines on the check to kind of create like a straight line. Um, to straighten the line out a little bit as well. I think also in the next project, we might go over the edging, like um, like it's self-piping, but I'm not 100% sure if we're going to get to that. Um, but self-piping is definitely something that I want to share with you guys because it's another one of those tricks that makes it look so over-the-top professional, but is so really, really easy. Um, and actually, we can do it with Dollar Tree materials now too. So... I think I'm going to show that to you, maybe if we put the skirt on this, and I'll talk about the skirt. You guys know what I'm talking about, do you? Uh, but I'm talking about possibly putting a skirt on this. I saved all the materials to do it um, for another day for another project. 
uh, or to do additionally to this project. And if I do that, then I'll go ahead and I'll show you self-piping as well, because I think that that would really up the factor on this bad boy just a little bit more as well. Okay. Now, okay. Now, I purposefully wanted each side to be the same with the seam. However, if you wanted to take your two long sides and put both seams here, you would just wrap your short ends first or whatever. You would wrap the two undersides first and then you would lift this over and fold the edges over and that. But I liked it, I wanted it like this on purpose. This is how I wanted it. It's finished, I love it. It's gonna go with my living room perfectly. So I do wanna show you that if you want to sew or even glue a hem like this, like say this was a hem, <laughs> the hem's not gonna stay for the, for the purposes of this video. What you could do is you could um, take a piece of fabric with the hem up inside out and you could staple it along one of the lines. And what that will do, and I'll try to mimic it here, is that will create a skirt, like a skirted bottom. Um, and then what I would suggest you do, if you're gonna do a skirted bottom, is do like a pleated end. And what that is, is basically, um, you lay your fabric like you're gonna staple it, right? And you fold this about, you decide, one inch, two inches, you fold one inch in that way and you fold one inch in that way. You see, and it creates this pleat on the end. Now, if you are gonna do this and you wanna just like, you could just go like staple, 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 and then glue some trim in there. That's like the easiest way to do it fancy. Um, if this factory edge was perfect, I would totally just do this right now. Um, but we were talking and we don't know if we wanted it to be skirted or how, you know, so we're not gonna do that right now. So we're just gonna leave it for now. I'm gonna keep all that fabric um, in case we do decide to skirt it, but that's it for now. And if I color the wheels, I'll share that with you too. So that's it for this Ottoman Recover with Dollar Tree products. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you do give this video a thumbs up. It doesn't look so cute with that chair and you can see how much yellow like that chair is ivory. So that's why I wasn't worried about making this bright white. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share with friends and family. Anybody knows interested in beginning to learn how to recover silly things like this. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And you can always steam it or iron it if it really bothers you. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.